With a relentless focus on excellence in healthcare, Pullman Regional Hospital presents The Health Podcast. See a psychiatrist? That's only for people with really terrible problems, not for me. Sound familiar? Well, so many people don't really comprehend what a psychiatrist actually does and how he or she can help people with a wide range of issues, especially in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. To talk about mental health matters and how a psychiatrist may be of help to you or someone you love, today we'd like to welcome our newest psychiatrist to Palouse Psychiatry and Behavioral Health, Dr. Eric Biona. Welcome, Dr. Biona. Hi. So good to have you with us today. Could you give us a brief overview of what a psychiatrist does and how you can help patients here on the Palouse? Definitely. So psychiatrist is, first and foremost, a, a medical doctor, physician. You've gone through undergraduate and medical school. And after medical school, we go into uh, specialty training in psychiatry known as a residency. And typically after that is most people end up going into uh, the practice of psychiatry. Some people go on to get further training in fellowship or, or whatnot, but that's the, I think the biggest thing is the, the medical training and th- that also encompasses therapy for a lot of people. And so it's a combination of the medications, but also therapy. Got it. And there are so many specialties out there. What made you choose the field of psychiatry? So psychiatry was one of the more interesting fields in medicine. Medicine itself is a vast world and yeah. so much in- involved. For me, I was just very interested in how psychiatry sort of considers the person in, in a very holistic sense, like I'm taking the, the whole person in mind and getting to know people in psychiatry, we're able to take the time to really talk with patients and really get to know them, develop these personal relationships. And that was really important to me. In addition, uh, just being really interested in the brain and human behavior was another interest of mine. Pretty fascinating stuff. All right. The COVID-19 pandemic has impacted almost every aspect of everyday life still. What trends are you seeing around mental health during this ongoing pandemic? Yeah, the pandemic, it's a very challenging sort of, that was sort of an unexpected and to hit the world. And we've all had to sort of adapt really quickly as best we can. And one of the things is there's been a lot more of a focus on mental health. And so that's one of the silver linings through all this is that there's been a lot more of a discussion about how to stay well. And also people have been more isolated with quarantines and the social distancing So isolation, we're social beings as humans. And so the isolation can have pretty drastic effects on on mental health. Absolutely. And you see the phrase more often cropping up, it's okay to not be okay. Right. Yeah. And I I love that because a lot of times people will ask, oh, how you doing? And it's sort of, you you want to say, oh, everything's good. But when it's really not, and sort of there's this sort of silent expectation that we should all be good all the time. But in fact, yeah, it's okay to not be okay and to be more open about um, talking about that and just being honest. And then I think at that point, it's yeah, you can find ways to feel better. Exactly. And on top of everything else, uh, we've dealt with loss over the past year, pretty much all of us. What impact does significant loss have on mental health? It's been devastating. I mean, the, the loss, it, it affects everyone differently, but especially with the pandemic, it's really healthy people that have passed away or relationships that have been lost or whatnot. The, the sudden and unexpected context of things happening, and that really catches people by surprise. And that can be traumatic even. And so it just, it affects mental health in a much more profound way. And, and so it, it can it can have devastating effects. And especially since we don't know really when it's going to be over, many people have lost employment, they've lost their apartments, and it's certainly no shame to go talk to someone about it on a professional basis. Yeah, you bring up really good points, Deborah. I mean, you're absolutely correct. So much uncertainty right now. We're sort of more than a year into the pandemic, and it's still really not really known what's going to happen. And part of what humans rely on for doing well is sort of having a bit of, of an expectation, some sort of certainty there. And we, we just don't have that right now. Things are getting better, but it's still some time to go. 
Yeah, you're somebody that people go to, and it doesn't hurt at all. You're a doctor, <laughs> but still there's a great deal of hesitancy. What do you contribute that to? There's still quite a bit of hesitancy with seeing, I guess, a psychiatrist. There's stigma still against mental health and sort of psychiatry in general or behavioral health is how it's called sometimes. It's sort of seen as for people that, that are really doing bad or not doing well at all. People get worried about, oh, am I just going to go see someone who's going to put me on a medication and have all sorts of say, am I never going to be able to get off of it? Things like that. Or, or just, you know, even letting someone know that maybe going through some struggles with mental health. But to be quite honest, a lot of people that I see don't need any medications at all. And a lot of the, a lot of the treatments can be based on therapy or, or other, you know, social treatments as well. So it's not only about the medications. I'm sure it's changed a lot over the years since Dr. Freud. Right. <laughs> right. So what would you say, Dr. Biona, to someone who's struggling with their mental health and debating seeking assistance? Right. Yeah. It's one of those things that we all go through the ups and downs of life and we all have our, our struggles. But, you know, if, if you notice that things are not getting better and you've tried different things, just as you would go talk to, to a doctor about cholesterol levels or talk to someone about a cold, it's sort of a similar approach in, in psychiatry, you know, just come in for an appointment. We can have a meeting and see what are the treatment options. And like I said, it's not always about the medication. Sometimes the medications can help, but that's not the only treatment we offer. Sure. Anything else you'd like to add to our conversation? Just to finish off saying that there is help out there and we're available. So just encourage people to not keep suffering needlessly if there's a way to, to get help and to feel better. Got it. Well, Dr. Biona, we so appreciate your time and everything you do to help us cope in a stressful world. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you so much, Deborah. It's a pleasure. And you can learn more about this subject, providers and services, at Pullman Regional Hospital online at pullmanregional.org, then search for psychiatry. This has been the Health Podcast from Pullman Regional. I'm your host, Deborah Howell. Thanks for listening and have yourself a terrific day.